and my Shasha. Hello to everybody coming into the room. Hello to everybody coming in the room. Just getting set up a little bit here, but y'all come on into the room. New kinds of anointing, new mantles. I'm pouring out new things all over, all over. Can't you feel it? Don't miss the way. I love to everybody coming in. Don't miss me. Don't miss my moving. No. Listen, cause I'm doing a new thing. A new I'm doing a new thing Don't you miss me I'm doing a new thing hey. New thing I'm doing a new thing Hi Zen, hello to everybody coming in the room Come on into the room everybody Join me in a little bit of music, Nancy this picture right here, you probably can't see it too well. But I think we got it from Ross. It may either Ross or Hunger. Oh, the picture. I think we got the picture from like, um, it may have been just from the regular market. It could have been. Just come from like Walmart or somewhere. Um, either Walmart or, um, I feel like it was from Walmart. I'm almost certain it was from like either Walmart. You probably also found one. Probably. Oh, Everybody coming in. We're just setting up. Come on into the room. Y'all go tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend that the sanctuary is live. We're gonna have a new way of listening to and working with you. Guys, these are resins from our um, from our Goddess Blend collection. This is a little bit of our resin that I'm working with. It's called Consecration. And so I'm just consecrating my space, okay? Y'all can just drop it onto a pole or you can grind it up. Doesn't matter. You've been made new. All things are passed away. You are new. Receive your new, new, new. Receive your new, new, new. Embrace your 
Y'all want to know what song this is, guys? Uh, this song that we are um, ushering in and setting our atmosphere with is called, um, it's called um, New Things or New Thing by Daryl Walls. Um, he is the, the older brother in the, um, in the Walls group. Um, he's the, the eldest brother. His name is... Um, his name is Daryl Walls. Okay. And so I love this song. If any of you guys want to find this song, um, once you hop off, feel free. It's called New Thing by Daryl Walls. Hello to everybody and welcome uh, to this week's segment of our Art of Ritual. My name is Rue Monera Holland Bay and I am one half of the sanctuary um, here at Holland Spices. Let me turn this down a little bit. Y'all. I am one half of the sanctuary here at Holland Spices. On the other side, y'all know my beautiful, my amazing uh, wife, Akila Asad Holland. You guys affectionately know her as Mrs. Holland. Uh, she is on the other side of Holland Spices, uh, and she is here around sending energy. She's just relaxing after a long week and getting ready for her um, her new work week, so she is around. So everybody say, hello, Mrs. Holland. Um, but welcome to this week's episode of Art of Ritual titled Music Mancy. Uh, the value of the soul um, and today guys I'm so excited I welcome each of you to the sanctuary to all of the new faces uh, and hello to each and every person that will watch the playback I am so excited to have you guys here and to see you guys uh, in the room and sharing space and energy with me I know that it's late where some of you guys are uh, the day is still drawing nigh here over here in, um, in Arizona, and so we still got some daylight outside. And I truly hope that you guys have had um, an amazing, amazing day. And if you haven't had an amazing day, don't worry, the day is not over. We're going to finish the day super, super strong, uh, and we're going to try to at least get your day uh, feeling balanced by the end of this show, right? And if you don't know how to balance, I promise you guys that through the art of music, Nancy, uh, you will most certainly be able to turn your day around if you find that it's shitty, ensuring that you end on the highest note that you could possibly end on. Hi, Asia. Hi, Boo. How are you, my love? Um, welcome to um, Art of Ritual. This is my first time seeing you, so hi, Boo. 
Um, and so this week's art of ritual is titled episode seven. Guys, we, we've been doing really, really well and being really, really consistent with the content over here at Helen Spices. Uh, those of you who joined us last week uh, would have seen that we were having our art of ritual or shooting our art of ritual from my personal page um, for reasons of keeping business business. Uh, and making sure that the views that were shared and, and the messages that were sent forth um, in no way impacted or affected us over here at Highland Spices. And so there were a lot of strong views uh, and a very strong warning that came forth last week during our Art of Ritual um, titled Cold Red Revelations. Uh, and it was a phenomenal, phenomenal episode. And if you guys have not had a chance to check it out, I encourage you to do so. I was joined last week by my sister, Shasha, also known as Shalom Gaia L, or Divine Chakras, um, here on Instagram. Uh, she, We had a phenomenal show last week, and we really got into uh, decoding the messages that were coming in, especially as it related uh, to the Divine Masculine. Uh, and all of the unveiling that is happening around us. And it's not only happening within our divine masculine, but it's also taking place uh, in our divine feminine. And we're all really being put into the position of not only choosing a side, but in choosing the side that you fall on, being brave enough and confident enough to stand in what it is that you most believe to be true and that you most desire uh, to have and the way that you most desire to see the world around you, okay? And so we're really being charged to make a decision. We've been saying um, for a very long time, me and my Shasha, those of you who pop in every now and again uh, during our lives that we are out of time, uh, and not only are we out of time, but that is choosing season. Uh, and in this choosing season, we are all being forced to choose either our life or our pleasures. What is going to be more important? Is it going to be more important for you uh, to preserve your life, to preserve your family, to preserve your sanity, to preserve your spiritual body? Or is it more fulfilling to you? Um, to enjoy and to overindulge in the many pleasures that we feel like we've had access to or have been given access to um, through the powers that be or just being in the world. Uh, and so I just encourage you guys to really find, sorry guys, I really encourage you guys to just find out where you stand in all of this and where you most desire to stand in all of this. And if, if the people around you don't agree or they can't get on the same page as you, Spirit is really charging us to stand alone. To stand alone, trusting that wherever Spirit is sending us, provision is waiting. Um, and so I welcome you guys again to this week's episode of Art of Ritual. Here at Highland Spices on Sundays, uh, we take the time to give you guys practical um, spiritual maintenance routines uh, that will help you guys to get yourselves grounded to get yourselves grounded in your body, to get yourselves spiritually grounded. Because if we really look at the world and make an assessment of where we are, uh, our physical bodies and our spiritual bodies are most certainly um, under attack and have been under attack. Uh, and so spirit is really charging us to uh, take ourselves out of the passenger seat of our lives, just allowing life to happen to us, allowing life to happen for us. Uh, and the Divine Mother is really charging us to come into the understanding and the understanding of who we are as gods down here in this existence, experiencing all the things that we set up for ourselves to experience in order for us to learn, in order for us to ascend us to the highest aspects of who we are, okay? And so Sundays here at the Sanctuary, we use this time to be able to give you guys hands-on practical spiritual routines that will help you make make sense out of your life and that will help you to put in practical um, spiritual routines using practical tools, some here at the sanctuary, some from other places, but mainly a lot of our spiritual tools that we're going to be working with on Sundays are most certainly going to be coming out of the sanctuary. So even if you don't get a chance to engage in this ritual on today, I still encourage you guys to pick up all the tools. And when you have time uh, and find time, I encourage you guys to engage in this ritual that's going for today. Uh, and today's ritual is centered all around what I would like to call music medicine. 
Uh, and for those of you who may be unfamiliar with what Music Mancy is, Spirit began to deal with me um, heavily last year concerning music. Um, to be more specific, gospel music. Um, and I'm going to say gospel music specifically because I grew up in church. Those of you who have been following our journey here at Holland Spices or those of you who have followed me on my personal page, the one uh, that I had before it got hacked, uh, and this one that I just restarted, you guys will know a little bit that I've grown up in church and that my roots uh, as it relates to spirituality were really um, formulated uh, and took its foundation that in a Christendom, or what some of you guys would like to call Christianity. Uh, and I would say in that experience and going through um, church and being in, in that religious sector, uh, the biggest takeaway that I would say that really um, spoke to me the most and that I find myself still um, being drawn to and finding a new ways to work with it has been the music. Um, coming up in church, I was heavily into um, the praise and worship team, me and my twin sister, um, and we were heavily in the choir and in the praise and, and, and the dance team. So we were really heavily integrated into church. You know, it wasn't just something that we did on holidays or something that we did every other month or whenever our parents felt like going. We were going to church and very active in church even when our parents weren't active. We were very much present and very much in the experience of everything that church had to offer. Uh, and one of the things that I find myself missing uh, the most as it relates to church would be the music. Okay, the music uh, and the way that us as melanated people went about I want to say invoking the atmosphere or setting the atmosphere within our church houses, you know, as it related to who you guys know to Jesus, calling in the spirit of Jesus, or rather calling in or making um, room for the Holy Spirit to fall into our church houses. Okay, and when we see that same type of practice, we see it in Santeria, we see it in Voodoo, we see it in the Lukumi tradition, uh, and we, we see it in Hoodoo. Uh, maybe not so much as in Hoodoo, because Hoodoo really wasn't centered so much around as invoking spirits or conjuring spirits in order for them to fall on us. Hoodoo was really more centered in the practice of us taking the power of ritual into our hands and using that power of ritual in order to carry and to protect not only the present generations that were with our foremothers and our forefathers, but to also sustain the generations as, the, as we went further and further and further into life and into this experience that we're all here collectively a part of, right? And so I find that music is very much exactly vocational Bible school too. Shasha, that's a good one. Uh, Sha said that she was also on the praise and worship team. And so if you found yourself really connected to music, you know, or you found yourself growing heavily up in church and that music really spoke to you, drop your comments down uh, in the comment section and let me know in the ways that music really inspired you or how music helped you connect to spirit or how music taught you or gave you the understanding of what spirit was, right? Because coming, growing up in church and then coming out of church and really finding a whole new perception and gaining a whole new way of looking at um, God and looking at the way that we see the Holy Spirit or just spirit in general uh, the differences are are very much the same but in a lot of ways they're different and I think where they differ is the in the understanding of what it is that we're doing having the awareness of what it is that we're doing versus just singing words or just singing frequency, sending out energy into the universe, um, essentially to a deity that doesn't exist. You know, and when you you come out of the church and come out of that that veil, you learn that everything that we grew in church, grew up in church learning about uh, or being subjected to was really learning about ourselves. You know, we spent centuries sitting in church houses singing to ourselves, you know, singing praises of, of, of worship, you know, singing praises of celebration, singing praises of torment, 
you know, for some people, singing, singing praises of condemnation for other people, you know, and being completely unaware that the people or the beings that we were talking to was ourselves. And like the Bible says, when one and two touch and agree, I am in the midst, right? And so when you're around a group of generators, right, a generator is, is basically something that allows or makes an experience happen, right? And so when you're around a group of generators, the only thing that can happen is reaction. The only thing that can happen uh, is, is the creation of something, is the creation of spirit. It is the activation of our substance that we feel when we're sitting in our church houses, right? Or when we are activating uh, these little why, okay? Uh, when we are activating and conjuring our ancestors. You know, we are calling forth and working with the substance of these beings. Because that substance is available to all of us in this universe. And that same substance that's in the universe, we are the physical manifestations of that. And Spirit is really bringing us to a time of growing us up. You know, we've been infantile, almost like toddlers or children, you know, coming up, being groomed in Christianity uh, because we thought that we were talking to our parent. You know what I'm saying? We thought that we were talking to our father mainly. Uh, and now spirit is, is telling us, okay, okay, my children, you're grown now. Your perception has changed. Your understanding of life has changed. You know, how how you understand yourself has been forced to change. Even the infrastructure around us is changing. You know, as it relates to the physical, this physical plane of existence, and as it relates to the infrastructure in our consciousness, the infrastructures of our bodies, the infrastructures of our spirits. And I think in one of the main ways that people of color conjure spirit or feel the the magnitude of spirit is through music. You know, before we had our musicians, you know, and, and our guitarists and all and all of our drummers and all of that stuff and, and the bass players and the keyboard players, before we had all of those things, we had the drums and we had our voice. And, and our ancestors would stand in their plantation fields after their work was done and they would beat their drums, okay? And many of them would sing. And they weren't singing to a, to a deity named Jesus. They were singing to their ancestors. They were singing and conjuring their spirit gods. They were singing and conjuring the power that existed within, within them. And I believe that through the art of music, Mancy, uh, and the way that we teach it here, um, it is my goal to really reconnect us as gods with the art of worship not the worship um extended outside of us but the worship turned inwardly because this is the only thing that is going to give you the confidence and to give us the confidence as a collective that we can do what spirit is calling us to do which is to die to everything that we think we know to everything that we think we're attached to, to every bit of knowledge that, that we've consumed, to every bit of pleasure that we've attached ourselves to, to every tether that we've created outside of us, and to really come into the understanding that this journey, that this lifetime is about the edification of the self. It's about the ascension of the self. It's about dying to the ego, to everything that we think we are, everything that we think we that we encompass and to ascend to the highest aspects of ourselves okay and so here at the sanctuary we believe in the art of worship the worship of the goddess first because it was through the worship of the goddess right that the, that the male deities or the male gods even um could erect temples unto themselves we we were the blueprint right we were the blueprint and now spirit mother however you want to define this universe whatever name this universe has given to you they're calling you to come up higher and in, and in the way that you can ascend yourself we must look at music and we must look at music because um it is the sound of ritual that keeps this programming in place. 
It is the sound, okay, of their celebrities, of their singers, of their harpists, of their musicians, of their actors and their actresses. It is the sound that keeps the programming in place. It was the sound that kept melanated people stuck in church houses but removed from conjure. Does that make sense? Conjuring empty, empty. Right? And that's why many of us feel anxiety when we're sitting in church. That's why many of us sit in confusion when, when the high, when praise is high in the church house and you don't understand what compels a person to take off running around the sanctuary or what compels another person to scream out and travailing, asking God to do a new thing. That whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. That this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. That you are an indescribable God. All of those things, all of those edifications, we are speaking about ourselves. And today's art of ritual is that. It is surrounded with that. And so I don't have a lot of notes. I'm not going to keep you guys very long. Um, but we're just going to jump in. Before we get started in the teaching aspect of it, I'm going to dress my candle. Um, one of the spiritual tools that I have for you guys to do or to have was a candle. Whichever candle color you felt called to, I'm using white. Um, and I'm just going to clean and to clear and to consecrate uh, my candle and our Tree of Life Spirit Wash. And this is a phenomenal wash to use right now. As many of us are going to find ourselves going through barren places and walking through barren lands, many of us are going to find ourselves in drought, even though we see the waters of, of the Divine Mother flooding this planet. Once those waters recede, many of us are going to find ourselves in seasons of drought. And if we don't have tools and if we don't have effective, effective spiritual practices to help us to purge the water and to find the water around us, within us we're going to almost dehydrate and die and so our tree of life spirit wash and our tree of life spiritual body oil uh, was crafted uh, with the intention of sustaining you during your drought seasons um, or if you find yourself dealing with a lot of uh, loner energy or if you find yourself as you go through your, your transformation of dying to yourself. And I tell people all the time, getting to the highest aspect of yourself, you're going to lose everything. I don't care what nobody say. You're going to lose everything. Getting to the highest aspects of yourself. And will we see that to be the most true? Or will we can see the greatest examples of that is by looking in the Bible. You know, there was a time when I was really like dead set against using the Bible uh, for any form of information or any form of um, any form of knowledge and spirit really began to change my perception of using that book and working with that book. And I find myself now in a place to where I'm using the Bible more now than I ever have before. Uh, and my understanding of it uh, has opened and it has expanded and widened. And for some of us, uh, delving ourselves and really drilling ourselves into the Bible, for many of us, it's created cages around us because it's put so many limitations into place of who we are and what we can be uh, and how we can show up in the world. And it's made us play really, really small. And that's because they gave you a book of ritual, but they removed the conjure, right? But you're still a generator. And so we still generated the experience. We still, we still generated the experience of worship. We still generated the experience of being trapped in a box, of being limited, of being confined. And now uh, spirit is bringing us to a place of giving us a new understanding in order to free you. But we have to freely take on these new understandings. We have to freely um, want to have access to these new doors that's being opened to us. And not in a way to where you feel like you're losing something. Because I think that with a lot of 
melanated Christians, I think that the, the biggest thing that, that stopped them from walking away from the church, because the church is not the, the church houses that you go to every Sunday. The church is really the body and has always been the body. Uh, and I think the reason why a lot of melanated people are so afraid to walk away from church is because they're afraid to return to themselves. Because in, in the returning to yourself comes accountability, you know, and there's nobody else to play the devil off to. Because what you learn is that you are both. You are that. You are the devil that you speak about, that we, that we spoke about in our gospel music, you know, that the devil won't win, that the devil has no power. Right, and we are also the God that we edify and that we worship and that can do all things and that are omnipresent and that is all powerful. What you learn is that you are both. And until we make the conscious decision, right, make the come into the awareness of who and what we are, we'll always be limited and confined to somebody else's version of creation, to somebody else's version of ritual. Because whether we like it or not, in everything, in every day, ritual was happening. And it would seriously behoove us to get on board. I think one of, oh, before we, before we jump in, because I see myself jumping in. And so I cleared my candle uh, with our wash. And I'm also going to go in with our indigo wash just for protection as I'm speaking, protection um, as, I'm, as I'm listening to this music and as I'm taking in this music, I'm covering myself in protection. Uh, and I'm closing every evil eye and every foul mouth as well. That may speak against, uh, that may be speaking against me as I go live now and those who may come after me because after all, when you start telling your truth, if you ain't got no haters, and you got nothing but agreeable people around you telling you yes, 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 more than likely they're enabling you. More than likely you're being a people pleaser, right? And spirit is breaking us out of that, that spirit of just showing up to show up, right? Or just being how people want us to be because it makes them, them comfortable. We're in the spirit of un uncomfortability. And so I'm going to clear, okay? My candle as well and some protection. Okay. And then with this, once I finish clearing it, guys, I'm going to go in with our um, Tree of Life uh, spiritual body oil that is available on the website. And it carries the same properties that I just finished telling you about as it relates to the Tree of Life Spirit Wash. It's a phenomenal oil to work with and you don't need very much. And you can be setting your intentions, calling in your intentions. That spirit allows you to gain a new perception as it relates to music. That you walk away in the understanding that you walk away with uh, their spirit makes you brave enough to turn the, the worship inwardly onto yourself okay that the spirit begins to deal with you as it relates to the god substance that we're all being ushered and called into as well okay and so once you're finished calling in your intentions and you're setting your intentions as it relates to music and the new understanding that you desire to have with music and to take away. I'm just going to set my candle right here beside me and I'm going to light it and then we're going to jump right in y'all. Hello to everybody coming in. Welcome to this week's episode of Art of Ritual. I'm so glad that you guys were able to join us. And I call for you guys to have a journal as well. Uh, and the journal was simply for you guys to, to write down how you're feeling before this live started and before you took in this information. And then it'll give you a chance to also journal again 
after you get a chance to really engage in music, man. See, to give you a chance to really see how being in worship of yourself, uh, you can do it in front of a mirror. You can remove the mirror altogether and just sit in your room and put on your headphones and whatever songs. It doesn't only have to be gospel music, but it can also be secular music. Any song that speaks to you, that carries a message that you're able to... Um, transmute into working and it's power for you and not against you right and right now I think one of the the, the main places that we see the spirit of music man see right now those of you um, who had a chance to check out um, Kanye West's shenanigans that he's been you know engaging in there's so much symbolism that's coming through um, and and just and in the display of his music, okay, and the and and the display of what it is that he's trying to convey to the world, you know, and in many ways, Kanye West is showing showing you guys who you are, you know, even him dropping Kanye and just sticking with the the, the word yay, right? He's he's edifying himself as the God that he knows that he is, and what I truly believe that Kanye West is showing us. Um, through this Donda album as it relates to his mother, the Divine Feminine, um, I feel like we're seeing the journey of Kanye doing away with the ego as it relates to him. And we see him ascending um, to the highest aspects of what we talk about a lot here at the Sanctuary, which is the Christ Consciousness, right? But if we don't understand Christ Consciousness and what that means, will listen to the songs of him worshiping Jesus and really speaking heavily about Jesus and telling you guys, you know, basically um, teaching the doctrine of Jesus. You'll take that in and you think and you'll think that he is talking about this Jesus character that we grew up throughout the centuries learning about in our church houses. And that's not who he's talking about. Who he's, who he's actually speaking about is the journey of the self. You know, the journey of going from the ego of man, from the pleasures of man, and ascending to the highest aspects of ourselves, which is our Christ consciousness. Who is the highest aspect of who you are, right? And so the first song that I played uh, when we first got here on um, Popped On Live, the first song that I played for you guys was a song called New Things. Um, and in this song, you really hear... Um, Daryl really speaking about God doing completely new things in his life. You know, God changing his voice, God changing his message, God changing his worship, God changing his ideas. You know, the visions that he had are not going to be the same as they are today because so many things have changed. And so in this song, it really, you know, it spoke to me so much because I feel like everything around us is becoming new again. I, I feel like the earth is becoming new again. For many of us, we are receiving DNA downloads and upgrades that are making our physical bodies new. You know, the way that we think about life and the way that we view life is not the same. The way that we view ourselves is not the same. The way that we view, you know, jobs and working for other people is changing and transitioning. Uh, and if we look at the weather and the way the weather is changing in transition, we can also see that there's a lot of newness that is happening. But in order for the new to come in, there's a lot of death that must take place as well. And so we see the death happening not only with us in our individual lives, but we also see death taking place on a grand stage, on a larger stage as it relates to the collective, right? And so the scripture that I'm going to be coming from uh, during this week's episode um, of Art of Ritual is from, this is Revelations 14, um, verses 14, chapter 14, verses 1 through 5. Uh, for those of you who want to go and read it on your own and decipher and decode it on your own, um, I'm coming from Revelations 14, 1 through 5. Uh, and I'm going to keep this very simple. And I just want to go through um, a few of the words that really stuck out to me that will give us a greater understanding of music, Mancy, and of the importance uh, of being very mindful of how we are taking in the music that's happening around us. And it's going to help us to really see the importance 
of worship unto the self, okay? And so Revelations 14 is titled the Lamb of the 144,000. Those of you who are familiar with the Jehovah's Witness, y'all know that uh, we they grew up very heavily pushing the message that only 144,000 uh, will make it into the and make it into heaven basically once Jesus returned on this planet, right? And so this scripture right here is dealing with the 144,000. And so it reads then I looked and there before me was a lamb standing on Mount Zion and with him 144,000 who had his, his name and his father's name written across their foreheads, right? And so this person is saying, I looked before me and there was a lamb standing on Mount Zion and with him 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on his forehead. And so the word that I want to look at here in this first sentence is the lamb, the father, and the forehead, okay? And when we look at lamb, the metaphysical breakdown of lamb, it represents um, the innocent, okay, or the guiltless. It represents a form of life on the animal plane of consciousness uh, it also represents the pure life and the substance of being, being pure in your heart. And so this person, so the scripture now having that understanding and reading the scripture back, what you're really saying is, then I looked before me and there was purity standing on Mount Zion. Okay. And when we look at the definition of Mount, it means to rise up. Okay. To rise and amount, to ascend. And when we look at Zion, Zion breaks down into sunny, to being very dry, and to being very clear, unobstructed, having a place set up, okay, established. And so the way that, that this first scripture really interprets to me is here we're saying, or we're seeing, it could be Jesus, you know, it could be yourself. I want you to put yourself into this position of being the person looking before you. And so when we read back over the scripture, it says that I looked before me and I saw purity rising up before me. So there is a purity that's being established, right? That's being established around us. When we look at the sun, and if I was to put this scripture and take this scripture, this first verse, and if I was to look at and to see where I see this scripture show up, it would be the sun. Okay? It would be the sun coming into its second coming the second coming of christ we hear if we look at the sun this is not the same sun okay this is it's not the same heat okay it's not the same energy it's not the same colds everything about the sun is new okay and so in a way we we watch the second coming of christ we watch we're watching the second coming you know of christ and in this second coming of christ they're calling us to rise up into our innocence and to take our place right but in order for you to take your place in order for us to take our place as it relates to our ascension we must become innocent again okay we must become pure almost likened to the animals of this of this plane to the, of this plane of existence being in in operation with nature i say all the time that i think we out of if you look at all of the beings that are on this planet i think the most being that is out of harmony with nature is us. We're the only, I feel, being that, that's down here that wants to go our own way, that wants to, to, to be in the energy of free will, really understanding that to be in the energy of free will is really to be in harmony with nature. It's really to be uh, standing within the principles as it relates to this universe. That's really being in the will of God. Because the will of God is this creation around you. Because you as God willed it to be so. Okay? And as you watch your creation, as you're watching our creation, you know, take its final breaths before it dies, only to resurrect again, we have to put, our, put ourselves in a place of purity. We have to put ourselves in a place of innocence. Okay? Knowing that, that, that this life that we're desiring to see before us is already set up. It's already in our place. We just have to walk into it, okay? And also in the scripture, they talked about the father or they related uh, or made mention of the father, okay? 
and his name. Okay, and when we look at the father, the father translates into a generator. Okay, so the generator, you're making things happen. You're making creation happen. The sun is coming up every day because you said so. The moon is setting every day because you said it to be that way. The ocean tides come in and they regress as far as you told them that they're allowed to come. Okay, the animals don't take any more from, from this planet than they, than they need and they are in harmony with nature. Okay, so the father is the generator. And so the generator is here and showing up. And the generator is saying that it's time to come up higher, okay? We're standing on a mountain, and spirit is telling you that it's time to come up higher in your consciousness, okay? To be, to be formless, to be innocent, to be pure in your heart, to be pure in your intentions, okay? So the Father is a generator. Uh, the Father is the cause and the source of the mind and the life that is being expressed everywhere whether it is known to the senses or not. And so we see the generator in action everywhere, right? And if we look at look at the astroteric definition or breakdown of what God is, bro C. Freeman L., uh, I think he gave the most beautiful description of what God was uh, when he said that God was the generator, the operator, and the destroyer, okay? We create this life by generating it through our minds, through our thoughts, Everything that we desire to experience before uh, we took form here in this creation, we set up to be that way. Okay, and in setting it up to be that way, the experience that we desired generated around us, right? But many of us got lost in the experience because we forgot that we weren't the experience. You are in the experience. You are the generator in the experience. Understanding that at any time the generator wants to generate a new experience, you can do so. But in order for you to do that, you must understand who you are in creation in order for you to do so. You must understand when, when, when God spoke to the universe and said, let there be light, what was he speaking? Sound. He was speaking tone. She was speaking tone. Okay. And so the father is the generator, okay? The source of the mind that is expressed everywhere, okay? And the forehead represents the seat of perception, the center of consciousness, which the understanding of truth seals. That is the secret uniting of, of, um, of God to his Christ consciousness. Okay, and so when we read this, read the sentence again, then I looked before me, then I looked and there before me was the lamb standing on Mount Zion and with him 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written across his forehead. Is the, is the spirit of the universe written all over you? Do you know the name of the universe? Does the universe recognize your name? Do you recognize or will you recognize your name when spirit is saying, come up higher? When spirit is saying, fall away? When spirit is saying, it's time to rise up and to take your place? Are you able to identify when, when this universe, this great cosmic universe that we are, that we are from beckons you? Because that's where we are. Spirit is beckoning us to come up higher. And all we have to do is to change our perception. We have to take our place in the seat of our perception in order for us to understand what it is that we're looking at. In order for you to see your innocence. In order for you to see your place. In order for you to see the mountain that spirit is calling you to. In order for you to see the purity of heart that you need in order for you to enter into this new life, into this new way of being, okay? So the forehead is the seat of perception. And so the name of who you are, the name of this universe is written across your perception. What is your perception telling you, okay? How are you perceiving the sounds and the frequencies of this universe? How are you perceiving the music of nature? How are you perceiving the message from nature, okay? 
How are you uniting your consciousness with Christ? Your awareness that you are the I am that I am. That's all consciousness is, is the awareness. Okay? And Christ simply is the spiritual activity of the I am made manifest. That is who are you? I am that I am. I am Ru Munera Highland Bay. That is who I am. Okay, and when I look at my name and how my name requires me to show up, it's, it translates into spirit brightly shining or spirit shining brightly. So that tells me that the only way for me to show up as the highest aspects of myself is to allow my spirit to shine as bright as it can, no matter who it offends. Ensuring that my light is able to reach every dark corner or every dark soul. That my light is able to reach me in the deepest and the darkest aspects of myself. Okay? That they're able to reach me and unveiling the ugliest truths about myself. In order for me to undo them. In order for my perception to change about the purity in my heart. In order for me to rise unto Mount Zion what spirit is calling us to be, okay? Let's look at heaven. Okay, let's go back. I got to go to verse two. And then I heard a sound from heaven, like the roar of rushing waters and like a loud peal of thunder. The sound I heard were like the harpists playing their harps. And they sang a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders. And I want to look at heaven. When we look at heaven, heaven translates into Christ consciousness, okay? Or the realm of the divine mind. The realm of the divine mind. What is your mind looking like? What is your mind telling you? Would heaven is your mind creating around you? What hell or bondage is your mind, this divine mind? Are you using it for evil or are you using it for good? And evil is any thought that goes contrary to God. Who is God? You are. So are you self-sabotaging in your thoughts? Are you self-sabotaging in your behavior, okay? And the destruction that we see happening around us, are you going to be brave enough to pick up your own heaven or to pick up your own hell and to create and to generate a whole new experience, right? Because heaven is our Christ consciousness. Are you going to rise up to Mount Zion? Are you going to rise up to meet your higher self? Are you going to rise up to the awareness that you are God and that the substance of this universe that is emanating outside of this universe is the same spiritual substance that we find in ourselves when we peel the layers back, okay? And so heaven is the realm of the, 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 the oh. heaven is the realm of the divine mind. It is a state of consciousness and harmony with the thoughts of God. Are you in harmony with yourself? Are you in harmony with yourself? Because that's really going to determine the tune that's coming from inside of you. It's going to determine the harp, the sound of the harp that is playing within you. It's going to determine the stairway that you make your way up to as you ascend. And as you make your way up, is that journey going to be difficult and callous? Or is the journey going to be free flowing and in harmony with God because you are God. So how are you going to generate your experience? How are you going to generate your new sound? How are you going to generate this Christ consciousness, your heaven? How are you going to get your divine mind going and activated, okay? So heaven is a state of consciousness that is in harmony with the thoughts of God. When we look at God, God translates into the almighty one, the creator, the ruler of this universe, the infinite, the internal. God is not a person, but it is a principle. Where do we find the principles? Look at nature. 
Where do we find the principles? Look at look at the, the molecular structure of the body. Okay? What is your heart saying? What is your crown chakra saying? What is your third eye saying? What is your sacral chakra saying? How is it telling you to get grounded? Okay? And what ways are they telling you to connect with nature? How are you connecting with and understanding the hermetic laws of this universe? Because there are laws. Okay? There are physical principles that keep this universe in place. And the first principle and the hermetic law is that the all is mind. That means that nothing can get to you unless it can get past your mind first. And so that means that you have to get a hold of your mind, a hold of your heaven, a hold and an awareness of yourself, of your Christ consciousness, coming into the awareness that you are God, okay? That you are infinite, that you are internal, Okay, that you are the principle of God, that you are the spiritual activity of God made manifest. Okay, then I want to look at the next word heart, which is in uh, this verse. And when we look at the breakdown of heart, okay, harp, we're talking about the the um, the instrument, the musical instrument that is the harp, and we're talking about the harpist. Okay, and when we look at the heart. The heart breaks down and it shares the symbolism of the ladder as leading to the next world, right? And so this verse says, and I heard a sound from heaven, like the roar of rushing waters and like the loud peal of thunder. The sound I heard was like that of a harpist playing their hearts. And so that tells you that the, that the next world is calling to you because the harp shares the symbolism with the ladder that represents connecting to the new world. So what new worlds are you conjuring? What new sound is going forth out of you as the harpist? What ladders are you climbing to get to the highest aspects of yourself? Okay, what new worlds are you creating? What new worlds are you generating into that you have no business being in at all? Okay? What is the harp is playing within you? Okay? The harp also translates into uh the harp is represents death. When we look at look at um the, the symbolism or the spiritual symbolism as it relates to the harp is, meaning the person who plays the harp, it represents death. Right? And so if the harp is the if the harp is um, the next world or the outer world and the harp is his death, that means that, you, that you're going to have to die to yourself in order for you to get there, right? That means that you're going to have to die to aspects of yourself that you were used to having, pleasures that you were used to having, conversations that you were used to having, okay? Friends, family members that you were so used to being in connection with, friends that you were so used to being in connection with, Right? And coming and, and ascending into the next worlds that we are actively creating, something within us and around us must die in order for this new world to be birthed, okay? And this scripture right here is telling you that I heard the sound. So that tells us that the alarms are going off. That tells us that spirit is trying to get our attention. And where do we see the rushing waters taking place everywhere around us? Anywhere, Australia, London, um, or New Orleans right now, Louisiana, okay? We see so many places flooding because there is a spiritual cleansing that's taking place. And as the waters are rushing in, there is a sound that is coming out and it's calling death to everything that doesn't belong as it relates to the collective and as it relates to our individual lives. We must be the harpist in our experience, okay? We must be willing to call death and to put death to everything that no longer works and to everything that cannot come into the, into the next experience with us, okay? Uh, the next place that we see the symbolism of the heart is, um, it is as an emblem 
and King David uh, as it was as it was used or spoke about in the Old Testament. Okay, and when we look at the story of David, um, David was basically a harpist. Some would say he was a slave who was working under King Saul. And at some point in the story, King Saul becomes tormented. Uh, and they say that he was tormented by evil spirits. Uh, when we look at evil spirits, guys, I, I have so many things open because I have so many definitions that I wanted to give you guys that I'm trying to see if I have all of them right, right here, right now. Uh, but I want to open up something really fast because it relates. But I don't see it. And so I'm going to move on. So King Saul was basically tormented by demons or by evil spirits. Okay. And um, Saul, when we look at Saul or the metaphysical definition of Saul, um, Saul was the first king of Israel. Okay. And he represents the will functioning and the limitations of the personality. Okay. So we're not talking about physical people. Okay. We're talking about. Uh, these are these people are basically analogies, okay, that were put into place uh, that should have been helping us to find and to learn who we are at the root of our experience, okay. And so King David was the next place where we see the harp symbolism show up very heavily, and so Saul represents the will functioning. And within the limitations of the personality, you thinking that your personality and carrying on this persona of this is how I am and you either going to take it or you leave it. You limit yourself. You limit yourself to being bitter. You limit yourself to being short tempered. You limit yourself um, to, to being um, angry all the time, of being stressed, of not of being unlikable, of being unloving. Uh, you limit yourself to, to the experience of love that you can receive, to the experience of connection that you can have through the limiting qualities that come within our personality. You know, there was a time where I felt like I had to be one thing. Or I had to show up in the world in one way. And I limited myself for so many years. And now I'm in a place where I feel limitless. You know, where I can be one person today. And if I wake up tomorrow and I desire to be somebody else, I'm that new person. And you don't get to say so. Because I understand that I am the generator. Okay? Making the simulation and creating the simulation around me. So if I want to be a mermaid today, and then I want to shape shift and be a bear tomorrow, and then on Friday I want to be um, a goddess, that's what I want to do. Because I'm not limited. I am limitless. Because I create this experience. And it's going to be whatever I say. Because I spoke into my universe and I said, let there be light. And there was light. Okay? And so Saul or King Saul represents... The will functioning and the limitations of the personality. The will should be anointed or inspired by judgment. But in its development, it often asserts its own initiative and is thereby defeated in its leadership. And when we hear judgment, that don't mean that you're going around judging the world or that you're passing off a lot of judgment on yourself. That's not what it means, okay? When we look at the, the definition of um of judgment uh it it takes us to the to the description of the last judgment given in the gospels okay and this judgment often put the fear of god into people you know thinking that this man who was somewhere out there in the clouds was gonna show up one day uh and be like you know y'all got to go to this fiery burning place of hell because you ate an oreo or because you had sex out of wet light. Or because you had a baby uh, and you wasn't married first. Or because you gay, right? Which is this new thing. Um, so judgment, it, it, it wasn't the judgment of the world outwardly. It was 
con the continuing of the baptizing of your mind. It was it was the the continual judgment of the shortcomings that you find showing up uh, in your life, be it the things that you feel like you can't do, any of the limitations that you find yourself set to. These are the things that we should be judging. Okay, these are the ways in which we should be holding ourselves to the fire and I using iron to sharpen iron. Okay, and when we look at David. Um, David translates into the beloved or the loved, okay, or the well-beloved. Um, the metaphysical definition of David is often referred to as a type of Christ. His life was a forerunner of, of a perfect man or um, the representation of what it meant to be the perfect man, okay? D David represents divine love individualized in human consciousness. Okay, divine. How are you giving love? How are you showing up in love? Do, how how lovingly are your thoughts? What does love look like to you? What is your perception of love? Is is love you know only given when your mate or your family is doing what you want them to do, or are you able to give love unconditionally? Are you able to give compassion unconditionally? Are you able to give empathy unconditionally? Or does your love um, come with judgment? You know, does your love, you know, come with conditions? Okay, so David is the representation of the human consciousness. And so when we see David in the story of him serving under King under King Saul and him being able to, every time he played the, the harp, he was able to, in a, sense, in, in a way, dispel the evil spirits. Uh, for a certain period of time that will fall upon the head of Saul. And so through the act of divine love, we dispel our limitations. Through the act of loving ourselves, of loving the conditions that we come with, of, of loving the journeys that we come with, of loving our shortcomings, of loving, you know, of loving our mind, of loving our flaws. It is through divine love that we remove the limitations, right? And so how is the song that is playing from you removing your limitations, okay? How is the tune and the frequency that you're playing to yourself? How is it removing your limitations? How is the music that you listen to ascending you? How is it pushing you forward towards the life that you desire to have? How is it pushing you forward towards the spiritual ascension that we all should be focusing on? Right now, we shouldn't be focusing on pleasures. We shouldn't be focusing on chasing a bag, okay? We shouldn't be focusing on burking bags, okay? We shouldn't be focusing on um, anything superficial, anything that comes out of materialism. The focus right now needs to be the things of spirit. If men have an ear, let them hear what spirit is saying to the churches. And spirit is saying that it is time to put death to everything that is out of order as it relates to divine love, as it relates to the limitations of your personality, okay? Uh, the harpist, you can also see show up in the attribute of, of the daga, uh, which, is, which was, a was, was a Celtic fire god. Uh, and this fire god was very interesting to me because this fire god um, known as uh, daga was also the god of the seasons, okay? The god of changing the seasons. And the way in which he would change the seasons uh, was through playing the harp. Okay, and when we when we go deeper into the symbolism of that and the changing of the seasons, what they're speaking about is the changing of the emotions as it related to man. So there, it tells you and it shows you very clear, clearly that the emotions of man is controlled by sound, by frequency. And I remember Akilah telling me sometime last year, maybe a couple of years ago, uh, when we would get into it. Uh, to be careful about the music that I listen to because it could either keep me in the state of being angry and of being upset and being mad and being hurt about whatever we were experiencing at the time uh, and choosing to use music that would edify where I desire to see myself or where I desire to see us or, where, or, or the vision that I desire for us to have and to hold. So music plays a major role. And as the seasons are changing, as the emotions are changing, there is a tune. 
there is a song that is playing from this divine universe. Can you hear it, Spirit is saying? Can you hear the song that is playing? Or are you distracted by the music, by the outward frequencies that you are taking in? Are you using the music that you are taking in outwardly to ascend you? Or is it stagnating you where you are? Is it keeping you where you are? Is it digging you deeper into the holes and where, of where you are? Is it making you more angry? Okay? Is it making you more complacent? How is the music and the songs that, you, that you're singing, how are they resonating within you? And then how is the, how is the song and the tune that is coming from the harpist within you? How is that song filtering into the universe around you? How are you removing the limitations of your personality? How are you removing the limitations of this universe through, the, through divine love, through playing the harp? Okay? Let's finish up this verse. Uh, verse 4. It says that no one could learn the song except the 144,000 who had been redeemed from earth. And when we look at the metaphysical definition of earth, uh, it translates into uh, the earth represents the consciousness of the physical body. So earth represents the consciousness of the physical, uh, of the physical body. And verse 3 says that no one could learn the song except the 144,000 who have been redeemed from the earth. Has your consciousness been redeemed? Have you been, has your consciousness been differentiated between the physical body, meaning who you are, you think you're the body, you think that you're everything that comes with the body, you think that you're every thought that comes with the body, you think that you're every emotion that comes with the body, okay? Or are you aware do you have the awareness that you are not the body, that you are the consciousness operating the body, that you are the spirit operating the body? Have you been redeemed from your body? If you've been redeemed from your body, then you should be able to hear the sound that is coming forth from nature. You should be able to hear the sound that is coming forth from the bird and from the trees, and from the grass, and from the crickets. You should be able to hear the sound that is emanating off of the sun, that is changing the sound. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna suggest to you guys, once this is done, get some headphones, go to YouTube, and I want you guys to um, look up the the hurts that has to do with the heart chakra. And I want you guys to wear headphones specifically because and wearing the headphones is going to counsel, counsel out the sound of the world around you. And the only thing that's going to resonate is the sound that's coming out of the hurts, the frequency hurts. And when you guys remove the, remove the sound or remove the headphones and you listen back into the world, you're going to be able to hear the change of frequency. And then the change of frequency is either going to resonate or it's going to feel weird. And then you have to determine whether you are out of frequency in the body, okay? Whether you are out of frequency in the spirit and how you need to come back into alignment, how you need to harmonize your body. That is the aligning of the chakras the 12, not seven, the aligning of the 12 chakras and putting them back into place, putting the spiritual faculties back into where they belong. Last week's episode, we went um, over the 12 spiritual faculties. I encourage you guys to check out that, that episode in order to learn what those are and how you can begin to put those back into place, okay? So have you been um, redeemed from the body? Okay, so verse 4 says that these are those who did not defile themselves with women, for they remained virgins. So the people who, who have been redeemed from earth, 
did not defile themselves with women. They did not defile their bodies with women, but they remained virgins. And so let's look at let's look at these two words before your mind go right. When we look at the breakdown of virgin, uh, it says that the ten virgins represents the senses. Okay, so virgins represents the senses: touch, taste, hear, smell, feel. Okay, the senses, the experience that allows you to feel and to think that the things that are happening on this planet are really happening. Because they're, they've emanated and they've taken root into your senses. Okay, so virgin represents the senses. Okay, and the woman represents the unspiritualized love that is natural to the body. So that means that the minute that we take spirit out of the body, the minute that we stop applying spirit to the body... Okay, you have automatically gone against the body and now you've put the body into a, into a state of confusion. And now you're unspiritualized, meaning you have no protection. You have no foundation, meaning your senses are open to experiencing and encountering everything. Okay, so the woman represents the unspiritualized love that is natural to the body. Okay. So sp being spiritual, being in spiritual practice, being in spiritual understanding is what is most natural to the body. That is what is most natural to the spirit. Materialism and superficiality is what is foreign to the body. Okay? Hate, evil thoughts, degenerate behavior is everything that goes contrary to divine love. Okay? So the woman is the unspiritualized love that is natural to the body. And her daughter represents the physical sensations which have been sensualized, okay, through impure thoughts. And so verse 4 tells you that the people who are able to hear the sound of spirit, that are able to hear the music of spirit, okay, are those who are still very much spiritual in their divine love. Those who still have their senses set and fixed to the things of spirit. Okay? You are utilizing your intuition to tell you where to go and to how to move. Okay? You are using your senses to tell you that by going into this environment, it doesn't work for you. And being brave enough to leave when spirit tells you to remove yourself. Okay? So those of, those of us who are still allowing our senses to be directed and moved by spirit, okay? And the daughter represents the physical sensations which have been sexualized or sensualized by impure thoughts, okay? Sensualized re relates to anything that is uh, gratifying. Okay, anything that is gratifying the physical place and where you are, that's gratifying uh, the, the sense of, of everything, your senses of where you feel like is real, everything that is gratifying that, okay? Uh, and to remove these spiritual qualities, you must remove materialism in order to unspiritualize the man. So you must do away with pleasures and with everything that you think uh, you need as it relates to the body and as it relates to the experience. Letting go of and relinquishing everything that is material and coming back into the center of spiritualism, of spirituality, okay? And that's nothing. That's allowing this universe to give you direction. That's not going out and getting 50 million tarot cards read. Okay, or getting 50 different people to read your natal chart. is what is your intuition telling you when you go into silence, into solitude? What, what messages are coming forth when you go into meditation or when you go into your prayer room? Okay, what messages are showing up when you're communicating with your spirit guide? When, you, when you're communicating with your own Christ consciousness? What is showing up on behalf of you? Okay. So these are the people who did not defile themselves with women for they remained virgins, okay? So they remained set in their senses, okay? Uh, they followed the lamb, the purity. They followed the purity in their senses. They allowed their senses to remain pure. 
they allowed their understandings to remain pure. And they so in following the lamb everywhere they went, that means that your senses are following every manner of purity. Your senses are only attracted to every manner of purity. Okay? And then it goes on to say that they were purchased from among mankind and offered as first fruits to God and to the Lamb. And no lie was found, and they are blameless. No lies were found. Okay? And so what I love about this verse is that I feel like it is really showing us um, and really speaking to us about the sound of this universe, about the sound that is emanating without of us. When we find ourselves sitting in our church houses and we're conjuring spirit or we're conjuring these deities in your, in, in your houses uh, and whatever um, African spiritual tradition that you find yourself into, you must understand that who you are conjuring is yourself. The power that you are calling down is yourself. And I want to look at power because power is the one thing that comes to mind whenever I'm sitting and listening uh, to gospel music. Um, and when we look at the, the translation of power, power represents man's innate control over his thoughts and feelings. So when you're sitting in your church houses and, you, and you're in, in the place of worshiping a deity outside of yourself, you must ask yourself, are you in your power? Are you in control of your thoughts? Are you in control of your feelings that are coming out? Do you understand your thoughts? And your feelings that are coming out okay next I want to look at because I got so many definitions down here y'all I have so many definitions down here yes so power represents man's innate control over his thoughts okay so do we have control over our thoughts okay do we have um are are we in, in in a state of purification are we in a state of building ourselves um up to a place guys that's that's onyx that y'all hear in the background if y'all hear that cat he's talking okay he's talking a lot and so when when we're in our church houses and we're sitting in our church houses are we aware of of the power that we're sending out and are we aware of of who we're sending the power to Okay, I want you guys to really um, take this time when you when you can find time to engage uh, in this playback uh, to really discover if the music that, that we're listening to is edifying us. And if the music that we're taking in is ascending us to the places that we're supposed to be, or are they are they stripping you of your power or are they confusing your power? Are they confusing who God is? Are they confusing what God and what creation is? Are they confusing your mission? Are you confusing your mission? Did you assume or were you programmed to think that your worship went to somebody outside of you? Okay, is Music Mancy working against you? Music Mancy is simply um, divining through music. It's divination through music. It's worship unto the self through music and music Macy can be used through gospel music or it can be used through secular music okay it's whatever you guys um whatever song speaks to you and one of the songs that i want to close with um as we close this week's episode of art of ritual uh the song is called yahweh um and again this song is by daryl walls again um, and it was like a worship segment that he had um, somewhere on YouTube uh, but what I loved about the song is that it was called Yahweh and when we look at the definition of Yahweh when we look at the definition of Yahweh hold on y'all I told y'all I got so many things open so many things open y'all okay right here when we look at the definition of Yahweh um, Yahweh represents Jehovah or translates into Jehovah uh, and that translates into meaning the self-existent one 
okay? One who reveals himself to his creation and through his creation, right? You are the self-existent one. You are Jehovah. When we're sitting in church and we're, we're calling on the Lord or we're calling on Jehovah or we're saying Jehovah Jireh, my, my provider, or we're calling on Yahweh and we're asking the will of Yahweh to be done, we're asking uh, that, that Yahweh intervenes into our lives, that Yahweh gives us uh, the things that we are desiring to have. You're speaking to yourself. And so what I love about this song uh, is, that, is that it's a worship song. And, and the worshiping of the song is really um, calling out the name. It's calling out the name of Yahweh. And those of us who are with us in the beginning, we spoke spoke about the name. Will you be able to identify your name when spirit calls? Will you be able to, to recognize when the universe is calling for you to come up to the highest aspects of yourself? And that name may be different than the name that you've walked with your whole life. And will you be able to freely give it up and to walk away? Will you be, are you brave enough to exclaim and to proclaim yourself as being Yahweh? I am Yahweh, the self-existent one. When I call on Jehovah, understand that I'm not calling on a white man named Jesus or a black one either. I'm talking to myself. I am commanding myself. I am giving worship unto myself. And so Yahweh represents um, the existent one. And in this song, you're going to hear him speaking in tongues. Um, and tongues translates into the ability to express truth clearly and freely. Are you able to express your truth? Or is it clear? Is your understanding of your truth clear? When you hear someone speaking in tongues in your church services, they should be able to then interpret what it is that they're speaking. Because to speak in tongues means to freely have the ability to express truthfully and clearly the things that you are saying the things that are translating in a completely different way and so through this song i want you guys to really take this moment these last few minutes as we close out this week's art of ritual and a little bit of music mancy i want you guys to really take this song in and as you're listening to this song i want you to think to think on yourself I want you to see yourself as Yahweh and to make this song very, very personal because in making worship unto the self very personal is going to teach us how to show up in our own creations. It's going to teach us how to forever continue to build up our own universe, not to stand on the sidelines and wait for somebody else to do it. And the way in which we think they're going to do it is by praise and worshiping them. Praise and worship yourself through the art of, art of music, Macy, which is the worship unto the self. Okay? And I want to thank you guys for joining me here at the sanctuary again uh, for this week's episode of Music Macy, The Value of the Soul. What is the value of your soul? What is the value of your song? What is the value of the sound that is coming out of you? Is it worthy or is it worthless? Have you allowed somebody else to tell you the price or have you already set one in place, making sure that nobody validates it? Are you clear on who you are as the soul? Are you clear on the value and the worth of your soul? If you're not clear, Allow this time, this time and music, Mancy, as we close out to be a reminder to you that you are Yahweh, the self-existent one, that you are the I am that I am. Every day that you wake up and every day that you go to sleep, you are Yahweh. And I thank y'all for joining me. But before y'all leave me, let's close out in a little bit of music, Mancy. This song is called Yahweh by Daryl Walls. Yahweh, Yahweh. Well, I love this song. Yahweh, Yahweh. Yahweh. We lift you high. Yahweh, Yahweh. Yahweh. 
and they've already poured it out. Your hair, the breath of the universe has already been poured out in you. Your hair, and it's in your lungs. The breath of life, and so you use the breath of life in order to edify the self, in order to give worship unto the self in order to honor the self, in order to edify the self, in order to uplift the self, to Mount Zion, being the land, meaning being in the innocence, being in the innocence, being in the purity of heart. I'm breathing you in and breathing you out. I'm breathing you in and breathing you out. The breath of life. I'm so grateful for my strength. I'm so grateful for my fight. I'm so grateful for my own presence. I'm so grateful for how I show up on behalf of me. I'm in awe of the God that I am. I am in awe of the God that Wumunera is. She blows my mind. And so I edify her as I come into her. As I understand her anymore, as she pours out her spirit upon me, I edify the being that is in me. As I ascend to the highest aspects of myself. I encourage you guys to find your place and worship unto yourself, that you find time to give worship, to give honor, to give reverence to yourself, and I truly hope that this week's episode of Art of Ritual help you guys in some way and change the way in which you receive music and the way in which you take in music. I truly hope that this week's message um, encourage you to give worship and to engage in worship unto the self in order to edify and in order to ascend you to the highest aspects of yourself. On Mount Zion, being the lamb, being in the purity of your heart as you ascend. And until next week, I encourage you guys to join us on Tuesday for Tuesday's Tea. Um, this week's episode of Tuesday's Tea, we're going to be jumping into survival prepping and how to prepare ourselves and get ourselves ready uh, as we transition into winter time and to uh, understand the messages that are coming from the powers that be. But no matter what happens, understand that you are the God in your creation. And whatever you say is what will be. Whatever you believe is what will be. Whatever you allow and whoever you allow yourself to ascend to is the world and the creation that will build around you because you are the generator in your own experience. And until next Sunday, y'all, I am Rumunera Holland Bay, and I thank you guys for joining me this week at the Sanctuary for this week's episode of Art of Ritual titled Music Nancy, The Value of the Soul. What is your soul worth? And what is the song that's coming from you? What is the song that's coming from you that's going out into the universe? And what song is the universe giving back to you? Is it stagnating you or is it pushing you forward? I'll see y'all next week. Bye, guys.